Thank you for the world so sweet. Thank you for the food we eat. Thank you for the birds that sing. Thank you, God, for everything. Give me more. On a cold day in 1941, in the second year of the World War, in a village school near Coventry, 60 children sat down to a hot midday meal. Yet there were no facilities for cooking at this school, and there was a shortage of staff, because all over the country, most of the able-bodied folk were on war work. Yet these children had cooked for them and brought to them a two-course meal of meat, two vegetables, and a sweet. The story of how this was done the story behind this one quiet village incident is a national one. We were at war. Young Tim, practicing navigation in his soup plate, didn't know it, but war had found us relying for more than half the food we ate on overseas supply. The enemy knew this only too well, and they were quick to concentrate on stopping our food getting here. So we had to grow more of our own food. We reclaimed unproductive land and made it productive. We dug for victory in our gardens and allotments. And we tightened our belts as a nation. We cut down all commodities that had to be brought here in ships. Also, we equalized consumption to some extent by rationing everyone. And we ate more communally through canteens and British restaurants. That saved quite a bit. Supplies, time, and money. A hundred people eating under one roof meant less food wasted, less fuel used, and less labor being expended than when those hundred people cooked meals in their hundred separate homes. But there came the blitz, and that was no respecter of restaurants. Often in whole areas, electricity, gas, and water were put out of action. That meant no hot meals for the time being. What was needed was a plan to bring meals from wherever they could be cooked to the people wherever they needed them. But how? The idea for such a plan originated from a man whose job it was to think in terms of mobility, Lord Perry, chairman of the British Ford Company. From America, Mr. Henry Ford and his son, the late Mr. Edsel B. Ford, gave the money that enabled Lord Perry's idea to be put into operation in Great Britain. The idea was explained to the Ministry of Food and a trust was formed, the Ford Emergency Food Vans Trust. A specially designed vehicle was evolved by Ford engineers, planned to accommodate hot meals and transport them under all conditions. The original fleet of 350 vans was added to by donations from as far afield as Australia, Canada, India, New Zealand, South Africa and Malaya to make a total fleet of 450. Next came a plan for the use of the vans on a nationwide scale. It was worked out with the Ministry of Food and the Women's Voluntary Services for Civil Defence, whose chairman, the Dowager Marchioness of Reading, had readily agreed to cooperate in the plan. The already existing defence regions were used as the basis. The regions were subdivided into areas with vans at stations at central points in each. An area had a radius of 20 miles, but these areas were interlocking. If bombing required the equipment in any one area to be augmented, the surrounding areas came into action to help with its work. Arrangement, because of its dense population, it was divided into three zones, central, inner, and outer. In these zones were 21 stations. Each station had two or three vans. The total fleet covering London was 50 vans.